Hi, I'm Zaheen Hussein, Millville Sustainability Coordinator, inviting you to grow your garden at Millville May Days. Visit our town, catch the great deals at local businesses, win prizes, and collect all kinds of seed to grow your garden for free. Mark your calendar for May 6th and 7th here in Millville. Follow the Business Association of Millville on Facebook and Twitter at BAM15209 for more details. Broadcasting from Millvale Studios, this is Funny Money on the River's Edge. I'm your host, Tom Henry. Along with me is our co-host, Matt Wolfarth, and as always, our producer, Brian Crawford. Uh, welcome, and uh, today we have an interesting subject, and uh, Matt and I were off talking about all sorts of different things. And we, so were, we, we were. We were warming up. We are sweat on our foreheads and our brow, even though right. it's not hot in the... Uh, the sweat room today but, but now we're ready to talk about gold mining gold love that show. that's like one of my favorite topics tom because i watch gold rush all the time love it todd's a goof and then um what's his name just died the older guy from uh gold rush uh, i i, I have to him. say I, I i i am completely ignorant but gold rush is like literally it, it's guys in today's day and age trying to go out and find gold Right. I.e. with panning equipment, not gold. not panning. I mean, they pan for samples, but now they have big equipment and they have um, all kinds of large equipment. They got bigger every year, and I think the top they did three point three million in gold this year. You know, but but the price of gold is depressed now, so it's less. You know, when I think when the show started, it was at twenty five hundred or no, it was not at twenty five. What was it? No, the highest it was was nineteen hundred. Oh, nineteen hundred. Okay. Okay. And, and now, where is it right now? All right, now it's at 1226. Not that far bad. Okay, yeah. So gold has not fallen off the way that other uh, commodities have. So it's still worth it. Like right now, it might be a good play because if you're not playing on the oil and gas. Well, it, to me, I think a certain portion of your portfolio should be invested in gold uh, no matter what. It, regardless of whether it's... Do you have sliding percentages? Like good play a, a right Good now. time, bad time, like a bear market, bull yes, market sliding? I, I do. I say uh, in a bad time, this is a general rule of thumb. In a bad time, have 10% of your portfolio in gold. In a good time, have 5% of your portfolio in gold. All right. And where are we at now? 10%? Bad time, 10%. Uh, so, uh, I, I, well, okay, with... I have I, I should clear, I have ten percent of mine in gold diggers. Is that the same thing? Like if I invested in a gold digger, <laughs> you, I seem to be losing on that. Investment. I think they're the ones investing in you. <laughs> okay, and I, I must, I'm not I sure misinterpreted, how that investment I misinterpreted out. that. No, but not. all right, all right. <laughs> Let me tell you though. I like the song though. That was the reason. The gold, gold digger. Dig yeah. uh, you like Kanye West? Not really anymore. He doesn't smile. He's so <laughs> miserable for a rich guy. I know, right? Right, smile, dude. You got money, good looking woman. Like, what does it take to take Con make Kanye laugh, giggle, <laughs> smile, have fun, relax, dude? You got the world. So, so okay. is he gonna kill me now? All right, now we're gonna talk about <laughs> we're gonna talk about gold, and and the weird thing about gold uh, is is that is what it's worth, okay? Because it's all conceptual, like. Um, like a dollar, like a dollar bill is, is actually conceptual too when you think about what is that actually worth, okay? So what it's worth uh, is two things, okay? Gold is made into jewelry and uh, other fine items, okay? And uh, so it has a value because of that, because it's a precious metal that looks nice when it's made into jewelry. And a lot of people in India, is, that's that's a heavy area of demand um, for jewel, gold jewelry. Yeah, they have a lot of and, jewelry. Yeah, right. And China is pretty big too. And then you know, Western Europe. And the United I've never States been a big jewelry. Have a person. demand for jewelry. Good for you, but I, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I bet Sometimes. a lot of girls, you know, <laughs> you Good. brushed into throughout your life have been. Yeah, that's right? probably why I'm not with them. Do you like gold? <laughs> I'm looking for someone else. How so about, I like happy nails. You like happy nails. All right, so gold has that one aspect to it. But it also has the more important aspect, and that is as a store of value. Okay, throughout the ages, uh, gold, because it was a rare uh, metal and because it it looked nice I'm assuming uh, <clears throat> it was the earliest currency that we know of okay and gold has cons you know continued throughout the years uh, to be a very good effective store of value uh, now, is that really true anymore right because well I'm definitely wrong because before this whole collapse of the oil and gas i said you know really we run on oil and gas not gold right i said more importantly you should invest in oil and gas not gold because we don't run on gold anymore but i'm proven wrong right now well uh one good way to uh look at it is uh you know in ancient egypt uh they they determine you know that they have it written down how much gold but how many ounces of grain Okay. Gold the grain standard. Yeah. And it turns out that uh, in 2016 and in 2015 and 2014 and in 2013 and, and so on, that that ratio was exactly the same as in ancient Egypt. Are you kidding? How do you know that? That's crazy. Because I've read about it. Oh, you've done research. Um, so... <laughs> Tom, Tom comes prepared. You know, w when we look at the price of gold uh, it, and we say, oh, that fluctuates, it's very wild. Um, well, so does the price of grain and everything else. You're right. Last year, commodities were all down, right? Right. That was like kind of a, so a tickler for you to it, say some, things are wrong. It's Denmark. important to remember that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's good to look at these historical ratios, too, because... Um, Oftentimes, if they're off, like if gold were going to buy, you know, the same amount of gold we're going to buy uh, two bushels of wheat instead of one, well, then you might want to be start thinking about being short gold or short gold companies because that price is probably going to eventually come back to its ancient norm, you know, like to the average of what it's been through history. And, and so... I look at gold uh, as something much more complicated than just a mineral that you harvest uh, in order to make jewelry. It is a store of value, and it is probably the most sacrosanct store of value uh, that the human race knows. And you it's know, worldwide. The, the, the dollar worldwide. has a much shorter history. Also, until 1972, the dollar was backed by gold. Right. All right. Now, that's interesting. That was great. I so, love that little tidbit. So we've addressed uh, the the peculiarities about gold, uh, and but we all know that this the old stereotypes about like the nineteen forty nine gold rush and the you know the 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 gray bearded uh, hillbilly gold miner you know doing his little dance. You know, when he strikes it rich. Eureka! <laughs> yeah. I found it! Woo! A nugget of gold! Billy! Yeah. <laughs> <I've>, Woohoo! <laughs> Dancing with Dude, his britches. Dude, I would up. do that, yeah. yeah. Oh, that. man. I, Hookers I, for everybody. When I was little, I used to, like, <laughs> imagine, like, like if I dug far enough in the sandbox. Why is there not gold in Pittsburgh? I could find some gold, right? Mm. Right? Why is there not gold? I don't know. Do you know I went to I'm the Holocaust? A geologist. I don't mean to bring it down, but I went to the Holocaust Museum, and that was like tormenting that they would pull teeth. They would just yank them out of their. It was so sad to see. Like they would take their teeth because they used gold for fillings. That's, I, I, yeah, that's one of many, many, many sad aspects about the Holocaust Museum. I've been there too. <sighs> that thing was just, I, I'll devastating. never forget it. If you get a chance, you have to go. Yeah. Like it's, I mean, Show don't you, take kids. They don't appreciate well, the verbiage. Well, but, they don't take kids. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, and every adult should go. I mean, if you can go. Oh my it God. shows you what the human race it is It scares you of. like, the, and it started off. I and mean, it also shows you 
the good things that human beings. Oh, uh, there was yeah, there was too. some great great people that stepped up in that time when yeah. it would have cost them their lives, you know. And but no, I don't mean to die. All right, diverse, all right. But, but I was just talking about the gold in the teeth. I start with my gold mining. Let me just tell you, I'm a. I start with my kitty litter. I practice. So when I go to West, I'm gonna be good because I do it with their little nuggets. Like you remember, you used to just throw the kitty litter out like in a bag. Now you have to scan through it with a little sifter. Like you're a feces for now. That shit is gold. Yeah, like you have a little <laughs> oh, a clump of urine. Oh, I'm good. I don't know but why you would do that. You're like you have to now. <laughs> you like, have to. That's how you do it. I don't care. Yeah, otherwise, you have to just drop. Well, I will not own a cat then. You will not. Yeah. Well, I heard it makes you so, what's there's a the toxoplasma. Mostly. Oh yeah. Oh, not only do you have to do it, and you're sifting through shit, but it makes you sick too. Yeah, that's sign well, me Well, touching <laughs> feces isn't something you're supposed to do. So yeah, I mean, you're shifting that's... through it. That's gonna make it's you... not on the normal agenda, right? I don't know. <laughs> for that's, human... the, that's the norm now. We're feces forty ers dude. I right. put on my little hat. <laughs> Eureka! <laughs> right. I don't. I think you're going above and beyond the call of the normal house no, cat owner. You better look it up. You Google it. Everybody's <laughs> right. a feces 49er now. Enough. Let's talk about our first company. Okay. This is a great gold miner and I own it. Okay. I own it. Full disclosure. I have to yeah, give you disclosure. I'm going to be totally biased for this one because I own it. So I want you to buy it. But no, honestly, like I, I really do. Uh, like this one. What's the symbol? We haven't been good with giving symbols lately. Okay, N E M. N E M. Okay, and that's Newmont Mining. All right, it's now about twenty six dollars and seventy five cents. That's not bad. <laughs> that's down from forty dollars in two thousand thirteen. All of these stocks have gotten beaten up because the price. Why are uh, they getting beaten up, Tom? Well, I mean, uh, all right. In uh, I didn't mean to use your first name there. <laughs> Yeah, it's because the price of gold has gone down. I mean, the price of gold in 2012 reached uh, $1,900 an ounce. Okay, now it's at uh, $1,226 an ounce, and and that's um, not the low point. You know, it was down around uh, close to $1,000 an ounce. Yeah, I remember it was. So, but it's inching back up recently, right? With the yeah, uncertainty yeah. in China, right? With the concern. That's the right. Okay, so to to define gold quickly, uh, reasons why you would want to invest in gold, uh, there are really two. Okay, one is that you are uh, fearful of the economic situation. I am currently. All right, so that's a reason for me to invest in gold. But uh, you'll notice that when the fear of the economic situation globally increases. People rush into gold because that's the tried and true ancient currency <coughs> that people have faith in when they start to worry about other currencies. It's just kind of like a fear reaction. All right. So that's one aspect. Uh, but but you don't want to be hanging out in gold when, when uh, people are not uh, fearing the environment. All right. So if you're buying it for a fear reaction by... You want to buy it in anticipation of the fear and then sell when the fear is the highest. So just to go back to your earlier sliding scale, so you, you buy to hold 5%, but then that would go up as you... Right you now I'm at 10%. The, I mean, but yeah, it would go up to 10% based on, you know... Does it yes. ever go above 10% if it's a real no, crazy thing? I would advise uh, not going above 10%. I, I do sometimes go above 10% mm -hmm. because... Um, but but that's aggressive and, and dangerous. All right. Uh, but let me tell you. Okay. So so that the fear thing is one thing. Okay. The, uh, the other reason to invest in gold is because you're worried uh, about the U.S. dollar or, or any other currency. If you're worried that like um, the U.S. dollar, the national debt is something we're never going to be able to repay. If you're worried that uh, uh, people will, or, or like the Federal Reserve will continue to add to the money supply, thereby uh, cause inflation, you know, effectively diluting the value of the dollar, uh, then you you should. That's another reason to buy gold. 
But which is kind of happening right now, but the dollar well, no, no, well. it's been uh, the Fed has been adding dramatically to the money supply since two thousand eight. How come it never made it to Millville? But <laughs> <laughs> none of that money comes to Millville. They should just drop off a little bit. Well, the th- empty a bag in <laughs> three hundred four North Avenue. Like the yeah, Marshall not, Plan, right there for Millville. It's not happening. Bags of money. That was like uh, Bernanke's plan. Give he it. said, "Drop money out of helicopters." Oh, really? Oh, really? I <laughs> he know. said, "If worse comes to worse, he's like, it's better to drop money out of helicopters than to like uh, sit by and do nothing." Yeah, better than the turkeys on WKRP in Cincinnati, as God was my witness. But, I but swear what, they could fly. I mean, <laughs> logically, what happens when uh, <laughs> if you have a, a certain you know sorry. unit of exchange, yes. and then all of a sudden a whole bunch more units of exchange are dumped into the mix? That unit, if exchanged, becomes less valuable. You know, I could totally relate to that because once my brother was banker on Monopoly, and I know he's skimming. <laughs> like, because he landed on my Baltic like 30 times and he never paid me. Mm-hmm. But go, I, I totally, you're just, you're saying, all right. all right, this is the rate of exchange, but then you're adding more on your side. So it doesn't even make sense. So, so it dilutes I'll, your, you your dilute intrinsic it, value. Yes. Right. I mean, this is an old game. I don't uh, mean to make it a joke. The time, Romans used to do it during the Roman Empire. They would, uh, you know, they started diluting uh, the drachma, or, or no, that's the Greeks. They started diluting the uh, a denarii, that's the Romans, uh, and and it eventually became way less gold than it was. But like, and they thought they could get away with it. Was it kind of like the hamburgers? But everyone figured it out, even in back in that. It's kind of like the age, hamburgers at Wendy's, right? Everyone figured it out. That is not a quarter pound. Yeah, yeah. Where's the Where's the gold? So get some old lady in there. Where's the they gold? suffered from very bad inflation after that. But but that does not seem to be happening here in the United States. You keep putting out more dollars and uh, it, no inflation. In fact, is it because the rest of the world doesn't have a better answer than we have? It's extremely complicated. But but now I'm going to go into new mom and, and, and it would take a whole session to try and tackle that one okay but but i'm going to talk about newmont mining specifically right now because it's a good company all right it was founded by uh colonel william boyce thompson in 1916 and i was like was that guy an actual colonel so i looked up and i found out no he was awarded like an uh a colonel an honorary title. award for donating money to the red cross but he went, he, he rolled with it. He's like, call me Colonel. Call me Colonel. All right. Speaking of which, our good friend Billy Gardell got right. cast as Colonel for the Elvis, whatever, the Elvis series coming up. No way. Yeah, he just really? got cast as that Colonel guy. Oh, that's awesome. I don't know. He looks kind of like him. But so, I just All right. give Billy a plug. All right, so this was... Uh, uh, I'm not fa- calling him Colonel. Founded in 1916. <laughs> And uh, it, it really only began operating as a mining company in 1929 after acquiring uh, another mine. Um, it, it, it was California's Empire Star Mine, actually. Uh, so, uh, Newmont Mining itself, Newmont, is a portmanteau of New York and Montana. And uh, that reflects where Thompson grew up. And where he struck it rich. You know, he grew, he grew up, up in, in Montana, struck it rich in New York. What? No, he didn't. That's opposite. No, it, that's true. That's true. He, he grew struck, up in Montana, struck it rich in New York. With gold. He struck it rich with gold in New York. There's no gold in New York. No, he didn't strike it rich with gold in New York. He struck it rich as a <laughs> financier in New York. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. He's in my line of work. He's like Miramax of gold. <laughs> no. And then he started to buy gold mines once he had a ton of money. All right. So this guy. Uh, he, knows, he knows his stuff. He's a good financier. However, he grew up in, in Montana. And his dad actually uh, was mayor of Butte, Montana, and, and ran a gold mine. So he knows something about it, you know. Awesome. He worked in that for a while too. Well, all of those are, and I'm not making light of it. The fact is that he kind of knows both worlds, right? He knows the finance world and he knows right. gold mining. So that's kind of a, a great that's combination. Like a, that's like a peanut butter and my chocolate kind of deal, right? It's a great combination. Uh, and okay, so now um, Newmont Mining is the world's second largest producer of gold. 
Uh, it has mines in Nevada, Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand, Ghana, and Peru. Peru. All right. Uh, those are. <laughs> I don't know. Why I just like. Yeah, most Peru. of those foreign uh, uh, mines are are acquisitions, um, if not all of them, actually. Uh, now, when I look at it, uh, uh, the PE. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this is weird because we're looking at PEs of unusually low earnings for these companies. Okay. All right. And the reason why they're unusually low is because the price of gold went down in 2015. You know, it went down from like uh, 1500 to 1200 maybe. Is it the situation where they have to value their assets like the oil company? So, yes. Yes! Exactly. exactly. Square exactly. gets a circle. So, so and that, that directly affects the earnings. So, and they're always six months behind. So, right. Well, they have to do it once a year. Okay. It, it just depends on that. And, okay. So, for this company, take it with a grain of salt. The PE is 63.2. The dividend is 0.37%. 3 0.37. Might as well be Sorry. nothing. Yeah. Might as well... It's like we're just barely keeping a dividend just to have a dividend. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Return on invested capital, 1.13%. Okay, that's because of the price of gold. Okay. It, this is actually a very well-run company, and I know that. I now, know it's going against all of your numbers, and you own it. <laughs> all right. I right? know. So this it is, is going against all. It's breaking right. all the time. Here's one rules. that I like. Okay. Gross. Okay. Net debt to equity. 30%. Very low, very manageable, uh, very able to get through a difficult period and and survive, you know, because the balance sheet is strong. Correct. And, and when someone has a strong balance sheet, the other thing that says to me, uh, if they were the, the ones running the company for a long time, is that they're good at running the company. Because... A strong balance sheet indicates past success. Okay. All right. Um, and then here's a bad one. Earnings expected to drop 21% in 2016. However, I will say that because the earnings are so low compared to how they normally would be, I mean, although 1,200 gold isn't that bad. Uh, well, the other thing you have to think about, right, is that gold, when it moves up, it moves, it moves up quickly, right? So if you anticipate it moving up. But it moves down quickly, too. It does, but you have to, at this point, you have to say, if I'm going up and I'm unsure of the economy and I'm betting on gold, then you want to kind of come in low and get it now. So, and then it'll move up quickly. If it goes up to $1,900, those numbers will reflect. But basically, this company right? does defy my rules for uh, picking a stock. In a big way. However, I'm overruling that because I think that gold itself is something that is valuable now to me. And that's why I want to own one of the most viable gold companies there is, and that is Newmont Mining. Okay. Well-managed, very strong balance sheet, Yes, everything else looks like a disaster, just like it does for every other gold or commodity company. And it's important to understand also that all of these gold companies also produce a lot of copper. And copper uh, has been in the dregs. I mean, copper, it, it, it went south when China started having problems because Copper gets its value based on new construction. Mm-hmm. You put on all these copper pipes, copper wiring, you know, and and when that new construction s- slowed down in China, uh, copper took a huge hit. So copper is... Nobody's even stealing it off my house anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Remember, people just steal it, like, from work sites. Am I right? Yeah, they do, and they've stolen <clears throat> manhole covers and everything when copper was higher. But now <laughs> copper, no one... No one has the incentive. It's like a giant penny right now. This is heavy. It's like, this why would heavy. I bother with this? <laughs> this is Here, do you, you accept my giant penny? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, Flintstones character. 
<laughs> it's a heavy penny too. Like how much a manhole cover is what two hundred pounds? <laughs> it is heavy, but but you're not going to get anywhere with it because it is worth about a penny right now. Oh my goodness! Uh, so copper is way in the dregs. So you got to understand that that's part of the revenue stream, and and the fact that yeah, gold is down, but not down that much. Um, Where do you think makes them going? better than? Like some of those companies that are just copper companies or iron ore companies or something, but it's still not good for them. I mean, oil, uh, gold is still down, not as much as other commodities. Where do you think gold will be in a year? Okay, now that's a really complicated question, and I, I don't have a strong opinion on it. I just do have a strong opinion that you need to own some in case things go really haywire which I think is an outlying possibility. Can we go through that scenario really quick? Like, all right, okay. things go haywire. Really uh -huh. quick. Okay. Uh, what that would be like is like, okay, say uh, the Fed decides um, that uh, because, uh, or uh, that because of, of the global situation that they have to do QE again and again, and then it dilutes the value of the dollar. Uh, you want to be sitting on gold then uh, just to ensure that uh, you have real value that store the, the, the price of gold would then go up a lot in dollar terms. All right. Another scenario uh, real quick uh, would be that other countries start to dump American treasuries. And that's something that I'm worried about uh, in, a, in a large enough quantity that uh, the value of the treasury start to go down rapidly and the yield goes up. And what that means is that the value of the dollar will then go down very rapidly. And, and I just want to make sure that you have an insurance against that, you know, and it, I'm not so aggressive that I'm going to like have all of my portfolio clawing after every gain they can get when uh, there are so many serious risks that could destroy your portfolio altogether. Why not insure against some of them and, you know, be a little less aggressive? I think that's a smart move. Yeah, always be pragmatic and it makes sense. But I just, you know, I don't know. You just have to have some gold. I mean, that's always been what people say. Anyway. And, and, and I, a lot of people don't have gold, though. Do you look, know what I mean? This company, I, I wouldn't buy based on the stats that I read to you. You would buy based on the fact but, that you need some gold in your portfolio. Yeah. And this is, and a, this is a well managed company <clears throat> with a good balance sheet. NEM. All right. Going. Newmont Mining. Newmont Mining. <laughs> Next one I'm going to talk about uh, is Barrick Gold. And Barrick Gold is the largest uh, producer of gold in the world. Um, Barrick Gold went public on the Toronto Stock Exchange in 1983. Before that, it was an oil and gas company uh, that had sustained major losses. And the principal founder, Peter Monk, decided to change the focus to gold. And that was something that he knew. Um, uh, so it evolved through a lot of struggle. And today, Barrick Gold Corporation is the largest gold mining company in the world, headquartered in Toronto. Uh, Barrick has mines in Argentina. This is alphabetical. What's their symbol, by the way? Uh, ABX. Uh, as gold mines, <laughs> that's, some, that's a symbol I've known for a long time. Uh, because, yeah, yeah. All right, I won't get into that. Did uh, you date <laughs> it? Did you take it to the prom? What did the I date you, it? You're having sentimental feelings about it right now. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Remember that walk in the sunshine by the lake? It was one of my first purchases. Hand in hand with ABX. <laughs> You just had a sentimental moment. It was one of my birthdays. It's so funny to see like a cold like financial Mr. person Krabs. have a misty moment. <laughs> <laughs> With yeah, his... Mr. Krabs. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> I love that show. So Yeah, I know. It is great. Okay, so alphabetically. I uh, open for him, by the way. Barrick has mines in... Really? So, yeah, Tom, Tom Henry. Nice. Or not Tom Henry. What's right. his name? Uh, <laughs> yeah, but who's the guy's name? SpongeBob. Oh, Tom Kenny. Well, yeah, Tom Kenny. I opened for him and Bobcat, and Tom Kenny saved my ass because the microphone didn't work, 
And then, yeah, then like after years, I'm like, oh, he was great. Whatever happened to him? That's a shame he quit comedy. My friend goes, I think he's all right. He's the voice he's of SpongeBob. Doing SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah, I think he has a couple bucks in the bank. I think he has a couple Krabby That's Patties. Hilarious. Did he sound like SpongeBob back then? No, he was very theatrical and great stand-up, man. I wish he'd do stand-up. Yeah. If he did a stand-up tour right now, I would recommend it to everybody. He was very, very talented. All right, so, uh, <clears throat> all right, Barrett Gold, <laughs> it's a Toronto company. All right, it went public in 1983, and before that, it was an oil and gas company, which I said it had losses. Okay, and so this guy uh, decided we're going to go with gold, and, and, and it, deci- it tur- turned out they were much better at finding gold than they were at finding oil. Uh, so today, Barrett Gold Corporation is the largest gold mining corporation in the world. It's headquartered in Toronto. It has mines Argentina, Australia, Canada, Chile. Chile. All right, more mines in Canada than anywhere else. Uh, the Dominican Republic, Papua New Guinea, Peru, Saudi Arabia, which I was surprised about. What? Saudi Arabia, really? The U.S. and Zambia. <laughs> what do they do? Just jank it off the sheik's neck. <laughs> yeah, and said he, I know. Where did they get yeah. it? <laughs> Maybe Alibaba's still got a yeah, place in just, it. Saudi Arabia. All right. like, give me that chain. It has okay. <laughs> under its control, it has roughly a hundred million ounces of gold. You know, in reserves. Million. Eight hundred and ninety million ounces of silver. And wait, wait, what's the other one? How much silver? Eight hundred ninety million ounces. Okay. And uh, fourteen billion pounds of copper. All right, just just 14. to give you an idea of like what these companies are like. Well, like where are they stored? They have a self storage unit. Like, whenever you're uh, uh, mining gold, there's going to be copper and silver also. Oh, really? That's just part of the. They never feedback. talk about that on Gold Rush. Why? Did, so, is it worth it to take the silver with you when you go, or do you <laughs> I, just take? The I gold? mean, are you putting them in your pocket? I don't know what you're t- <coughs> what reference well, point we're asking, talking about. When it goes, I'm <coughs> talking about a corporation <coughs> that is is harvesting this with like heavy equipment, and like they they separate it out on 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 rolling. Uh, well, know, let's go to Jack. Belts. Let's go to Jack from Gold Rush. Tom, let me just tell you what we do. We throw a lot of dirt in the sluice box. I get my excavator. We throw the dirt in the sluice box. And nobody told me that there was silver. We're looking for gold. That's it. I just <laughs> want to find my glory hole. Todd's a jackass. We could have been getting right. silver and copper this whole time. Sweet. But, I mean, could have they? I mean, so. I I, I guess so. I but, but why would you go for silver and copper? Why can't you go for all of them at the same time? Well, gold is much, much more about. Look. Okay, 14 billion pounds of copper uh, this company has. They don't even consider themselves a copper miner. They consider themselves a gold miner. Well, I and, and that means that the, the uh, 100 million ounces of gold is worth way more, way more than the 14 billion ounces of copper. But, but, About billion, I'm sorry, no, billion you, pounds of copper. I thought you were going to give a bibbity boppity boop. Um, no, I mean, can you? Uh, what I'm saying is, it makes sense as a business person if you're mining gold and you could get the silver while you're getting the gold. Why can't you get both at the same time? Abs- Hell yeah! Welcome to Barrick Gold. But they that's get what... all three of these at the same time, and that's why they build up these big reserves of copper and silver. Well, Tom, that's not how it works on Gold Rush. I'm all just right. telling you. I'm not an expert on Gold Rush. <laughs> all right, let's go through these statistics here. All right, PE for Barrick Gold, yes. forty-five point seven. And I had to do that uh, by finding, like their earn their adjusted earnings and getting and dividing it by the stock price because uh, they apparently like they had negative earnings uh, if you included all the like one time events. Uh, that probably happens a lot in gold, by the way. One time events, don't you think? It could. I mean, like a flood or something. Well, a sluice box goes out. <laughs> Right, or an excavator goes right. up. There's a lot of stuff that goes wrong. This company also has a 0.58% dividend. Why even bother? A- again, not much. Uh, return on invested capital of 0.1%. Killing it! <laughs> Net debt to equity of 120%. <laughs> Ooh, that's ugly. That's too high. Uh, and earnings per share are expected to grow 27% this year, but... I'll remind you that that's off a very low base. 
so uh, it doesn't take much to go up 27%. Okay, uh, <clears throat> the um, stock price for this is 13.74, $13.74 a share, uh, and that's down from $26 a share in 2013. These, uh, by the way, these companies all have around the same market cap. It's uh, kind of interesting. They're like the biggest gold miners. This one has a 16.25 billion market cap. That's what the market values the whole company for. Uh, the other one, Newmont Mining, has a 14.26 billion market cap. Can you go over market cap with me one more time? Like it's the number of stocks outstanding time the stock price, right? So that's the valuation that's right. that the public places on it. That That's correct. That's wow. how much exactly right. I didn't expect that to be right. That's how much <laughs> value the public in aggregate puts on this company. So it's a good estimate of what the company is worth at any given time. You know, it's but isn't the public wrong it's quite the market a bit price. because it's based on of fear course. and and also because uh, it's it's based on imperfect information. Uh, you know, liars, the, the liars, management might liars. know that. Uh, you know they're about to uh, be taken over tomorrow, which happens all the time and, today. And uh, the stock owner might know nothing about that, and, and so uh, that means that the stock owner does not know the real value of the company. And so, uh, because like whatever the goodwill is going to be, right? So they have isn't that insider trading or insider information? Well, if as you, long as they don't if, act if on it. If the one right? were to communicate to the other, then it would be. But but in but in this case, we're saying. But they can't trade no, it's on just it regular. Either. I'm just saying that that the the the, the stock price <laughs> is not necessarily reflective of the value of the company when all the information is not known to the public. Yeah, and then Warren Buffett even says that you know eventually the market will dictate the true value of the company, which is true value, not the the market cap value, but the. I would I would say Benjamin Graham says that. Oh, he did. I would not say. Warren Buffett is a student of Benjamin Graham. Yes, so. I know Benjamin Graham. Yeah. So the, Give your credit to where it's due. Wow. I stand. I sit corrected. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin Graham was, was awesome. Brilliant. All right. So uh, let's look at these numbers. Okay. <clears throat> you know, could we make any kind of buying case for this company? Uh, okay. The PE is 45.7 and... Uh, our ROIC is 0.1%. Wow, talking? that's a terrible... No, we're talking about the same company. Barrett right? Gold. Barrett Gold, okay, great. All right. And then that's a terrible bridge to have to gap. Okay, and then the net debt to equity is 120%. Again, terrible. Uh, earnings per share expected to grow at 27%. That's very good. But as I say, that's a little misleading because the base earnings are so low. So... Uh, what I think is you have to pass on this one, you know, and, and we're looking amongst like, uh, kind of like, a a, a pile of corpses on the battlefield yeah. and trying to find one who has a pulse, you know, like, correct. Okay. This is not that one. Okay. That's really good. <laughs> okay. It's the biggest value. producer of gold, but it, it doesn't have a good balance sheet. Um, and it really doesn't have good earnings so far so i i would stay away from this one all right okay pass next one i want to talk about is gold corp all right gold, gold corp. corp is headquartered in vancouver you see a lot of these are canadian because um can canada has tremendous yes. natural resources oh they do yeah tremendous uh you know they're a vast wasteland when you look at human resources but for uh, natural resources, you know, minerals and stuff, uh, they're... Oh, uh, they're loaded. They're, they're it's very... a huge country, too. You don't realize how big Canada it is. It is huge, yeah. Half right. of it, people don't even know. They haven't even been to it. We own it, but we don't know what's up there. <laughs> so, Gold Corp, you know, headquartered in the opposite part of Canada. We should as, take them over. As compared to Newmont. <laughs> Just, don't you think we should take Canada over? Bring it back manifest destiny. Or, I mean, as opposed to Barrick. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, wait, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> make them American, yeah. which get another engagement. We with won't the be Brits. North America, we'll be all of America. <laughs> That's something that Trump might do. 
<laughs> no, I like right. it that they're on country. Uh, good, good. I'm glad you feel that. They're way. cute. They think we're, they, <laughs> they, 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 they're, I'm sure they. It's a neat it. little civilization they built up. <laughs> they're there. They're so cute. <laughs> they think we still listen to them. All right. So this is headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, gold Corp is the world's fourth largest producer of gold. So we've gone over the first, the second, and the fourth. We'll go over the third next. All right. Uh, it has mines throughout the Americas. All right. This is one that doesn't have uh, mines, you know, on, on the other side uh, of the pond, of, of the, the Atlantic pond. or or of the Pacific. So there is something uh, good about that in, in the sense that like, you know. The exchange rates. No. Not really. Uh, okay. All right. That's part of it. But there are also terrible exchange rates in South America. But. Uh, I, I think that there's a little more security in having it at least uh, within the Americas. Okay. All right. Now. Um, so we'll give that a star, a little mini star. One also, one, one I, I also have to disclose that I own Gold Corp also. Oh my goodness, dude. And you only have 10%. You're lying. It's a very. Liar! Small position. I know, I'm kidding. Guys. I. Uh, but but the one thing that I really like about Gold Corp is that it has the lowest extraction cost per ounce of any major producer, and it's by a long shot. Uh, really? Like that. What's in it? Tell me what an extraction costs. What's a, a it, metric for that? Okay, like how much does it cost, you know, per <clears throat> ounce uh, to get all my diggers and equipment there, get all the crew there, and have them well fed and hydrated digging a hole you know digging a mine creating the mine getting the gold out correct how much of that cost per divided by the amount the ounces that you get out okay okay that's the extraction cost per ounce and right? what is theirs compared and they to they have the company? lowest one oh like uh, okay uh their extraction cost uh, is like about two thirds of Barrett Golds. Wow, significant! Okay. <clears throat> Very significant. All right, Nuant Mining also has a significantly higher extraction cost. I'm not going to say that that's the be all and end all because there's a lot of other things. But it's an efficiency in business. Yeah, it, you know? it's something that I like. Yeah, I would with, like it. I would like it part. also. Okay, but other things have to jive too. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the other things. Um, the PE, not available because, or it's infinite. They mm -hmm. lost 11 cents a share last year, okay? So, obviously, that's a, a negative compared to the other two that we've already done. They lost money. The other two actually made some money, all right? Uh, Newmont Mining making significantly more than Barrett Gold. They have a, a dividend of 0.5%, uh, return on invested capital of 0.1%, net debt to equity, 20%. Oh, like that. Very good. Earnings per share expected to increase 12, to 12 cents. Okay. So, meaning like uh, because they lost 11 cents last year. They're going to do a Rent 23 rate. cent turnaround? They're, they're going to, yeah, to tw according to the estimates. Oh. All right. And that's based on, you know, like today's price of gold. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I know they're a well managed company. Uh, you know, I'm not so confident about Barrick Gold. I know Newmont Mining is also. Uh, but this it is. It gets Tom's seal of approval for management. We just have to do Tom Henry's seal definitely of approval. Definitely. Well, look at this. All right, look, the net debt to equity is 20%. That tells you a lot right there. It does. That's, a, that's the best balance sheet. Because that's a very equipment-laden business, right? So there's a lot of capital purchases that you have. Very many, yeah. yeah. It's expensive and stuff breaks. All the time. All the time. Uh, so Big uh, rent went down. You know, we had to replace that. Todd had to go haul his ass down to Alaska, get that fixed. Still haven't found my glory hole. My excavator belt blew. All right, so this is a company <laughs> that's losing money. Thanks, Jack. Thanks. And, and, and I would typically never recommend this, but because of the 
having 10% of your portfolio in gold theory that I ascribe to, uh, I do own this company because of that. Because I want to have a percentage of my portfolio in gold. And, and I spread it out. I, I don't have just gold itself. I have gold itself plus uh, miners. And, and, and the form in which I buy gold itself is not really gold itself either. It's GLD I buy, which is an ETF uh, that uh, has a warehouse in London and that's filled with gold bullion. And it's actually shared by HBSC, who manages it. Okay, you talked about that on a previous show. Yeah. All right. Any At any rate, I like owning the physical, or, or, or I'd approximate to it, owning the metal, and then owning... So GLD would be the metal, right? Yeah. Okay, and then... And then owning the miners, too. Then owning the miners. Okay. Those are both good things to do. So so that's all contributes this to the 10% position. This miner, Gold Corp, even though uh, the stats don't look too rosy, I know it's well managed. I can see that the balance sheet is really good. And that's huge. Uh, and so I want to hold on to it in case the price of gold goes up rapidly. All right? Because then it'll be an extreme home run. Grand slam. Awesome. All right. So you're situated. You're setting, you're setting on a good base there. The last one I want to talk about. Number three. Is one I also own. All right? And it's actually the only. the third uh, We got to take own. a break before we talk about this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. We are bad at these breaks right now. I am, I'm super bad. I'm going to go try to buy some gold at my break, hey, but we're going to take a short break. Ladies we'll and gentlemen, yeah, moment. we're going to take a break. Hey, guys, it's Matt Light, winner of the 2014 and 2015 Best Comedian Award by Pittsburgh Magazine. Now, it's your chance to come see me perform. April 8th at Dave & Buster's, I'll be at the Comedians for Cancer benefit. I'm actually a cancer survivor. Uh, we are actually going to benefit for the Testicular Cancer Foundation. Proceeds will go to them. You can come juggle some balls, play some beer pong, watch some comedy. It's going to be a great night. I'll be there headlining along with me, some of the best comedians in Steel City. Make sure you get your tickets now. Click the link that doesn't exist right now, but it will by the time you read this, and play with your balls. Hi, this is Zach Bell, the station manager of WCAL, and I'm here to tell you about an upcoming event being sponsored by WCAL, the River's Edge Radio Network, and Classic Promotions. WCAL is proud to be sponsoring Heavy Metal Mouse and Blue, a free to the public music and arts festival being held at the Nesson City Park Amphitheater on Saturday, April 23rd. This year's lineup features some of the best heavy music Pittsburgh has to offer, including revival recordings on this cabaret runner as well as Solar Burn, Claymore, Only Flesh, Tartarus, Old Lords, Shadow of Corvus, and more. The festival is set to kick off at 1 p.m. on Saturday, April 23rd. Be sure to follow 919WCAL in the River's Edge, Pittsburgh, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to keep up to date with the latest festival information and artist interviews. Stay metal. Okay. Shortest break ever. <laughs> now the last one I want to talk about. <laughs> We're so bad. This company is called Anglo Gold Ashanti. Brian just spanked my wrist. Yeah, you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called, Ashanti? Is it a person? Anglo Gold Ashanti? Wow, sexiest name ever. <laughs> uh, and it well, it's called that because in 2004, um, the High Court of Ghana approved the merger of Anglo Gold and the Ashanti Goldfields Corporation. Now, what's the high court? They're like, dude, we're yeah. going to merge these companies. <laughs> and they're like, it's awesome. There's tons of gold. <laughs> Bro, we can get a lot of Doritos out of this deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually much more serious. I know. I wouldn't really. The high court have gone. It sounds like if you get sentenced from them, you're just dead. It's like, like they have one sentence, guilty and dead. Like it's that's not it. good. Like two sentences. No, I don't know about that, but. This, the situation is complex. <laughs> All right, so uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti is headquartered in Johannesburg, South Africa, and it's the world's third largest producer of gold. Okay. There's a lot of gold in South there's Africa. A, there's a lot of criticism of this company also. Uh, over the last couple of years, it's been difficult uh, because I've owned this company, uh, mm -hmm. and there have been strikes against them. 
political, uh, unfair working conditions? What? Well, you know, I'm sure it's not, you know, like a, a, a day in the, a walk in the park, working a day in their minds. Uh, I want to do it. <laughs> I really do. I just want to chuck corporate but, life. And go. I think the main objection was actually pay rather than conditions. Really? So what do yeah. they pay their people? Oh, real good. No, I don't. I don't know specifically. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You but were like your seventy cent for a minute there. Like you're real good. You're no, like, rootinous, I. Tootinous, I mean, come on. <laughs> to be a gold miner, like uh, in Africa, they don't get paid that much. Can I tell you that when I was eighteen years old, I just broke up with my girlfriend. I was literally looking. I wanted to go do it. I heard it was great. Because for a writer, it would be good zinc mining in Canada. Like they put you underground and you do that for like. 10 days on, 10 days off or whatever. But it's really good money. I, I bet it's good money for a reason. <laughs> really? <You think laughs> yeah, I bet Do it, you think you die? Z- I mean, I bet it sucks super hard. You might not die, but it, it, it's going to suck. Well, you know, I was thinking about it. I thought it might be cool and glamorous because you'd be up there. But then I thought, like, I couldn't even handle, like, my CAT scan. Like, you know, that little MRI machine for, like, 20 oh. minutes? Like, they're, like, here. Like, I was, I'd be seriously claustrophobic. <laughs> Um, are you are you claustrophobic of that? Well, a little bit on that. I was. I'm not a claustrophobic person, but you're like right there, like all right. And then my dad can't have an MRI. You have like, to have an, they have an open MRI. He, yeah, now. I know. He has to do the open. MRI. I, did, I was wondering what that meant. I had a joke about that. I but went to an open the, MRI. It was closed. I didn't know. You don't have claustrophobia? Uh, no, not really. I hypnotize myself though. So I, I picture myself in a beautiful place with white sand beaches. How the fuck do you do that? I, I, how do you hypnotize I, I, I yourself? I do. I've been hypnotized a lot. That's how I started doing comedy. You hypnotize yourself? Yes. Self-hypnosis. Ever hear of it? No. Look. <laughs> Here's the symbol for infinity. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Count back from 100. Close your eyelids. Picture yourself in a beautiful place. Sometimes you're you, way off in Dixieland. You're crazy. I do it all the time. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's well, talk you've about never reality. Done that. Am I the only one? You've You're never the only one. I, I mean, I can in hypnotize sports, you they if teach you, if you don't visualization. Giggle. If you don't giggle, that. I can teach you how to hypnotize yourself. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> Anglo Gold Ashanti. Okay, it's 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 a big miner in Africa. All right. Now, I I don't know. If, oh, a lot of people heard about gold fields. Gold fields is was the biggest miner in Africa for years. Uh, but the, and, and this actually acquired part of gold fields, you know, because just the gold part, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, just the Ashanti part. The Ashanti. All right. Uh, and okay, Anglo Gold Ashanti has uh, <laughs> right now it's kind of ridiculous. It has a PE of one hundred and seventy one point nine. Wow, dude! No dividend. No dividend. No Re- dividend for you. Return on invested capital of. 0.01 percent okay j- just oh, like I like see. a nightmare like a nightmare so Zero far. point what there was like how many zeros there net debt to equity 91.77 percent wow okay which is uh not disastrous okay but not great yeah all right but here's the catch uh earnings expected to increase 160 percent and now the reason for that okay is because they came to an agreement with the labor union in africa all right and and uh because they have now instead of having strikes which which shut down the mines yeah shut down the mines and lowered their production dramatically they're gonna have uh, a a full year to produce Full year to produce. Okay. So I like them uh, for the short term, especially. Do you own this one? I do own this one. Wow, speculating. It's not as good uh, as the other two that I own in terms of a long term hold, but it's good for a short term hold because yeah, of this labor that, problem. Yeah. Get that backlog out. So I th- I think we've gone over it all, Matt. I love the gold. Gold gold was a fun show. Are we done? Did we do an hour already? We're at uh, 52 minutes. Uh, we're slacking. We're slacking. No, actually, we're only supposed to do 45. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So We're a little verbose today. Yeah, yeah. yeah it know. was fun, though. It was it's gold. Normal. I mean, everybody needs to know more about gold. Ooh, this is gold. very important. <sighs> Find the miners. So, Get the gold. Get the gold. You, I would love to Dig deep gold. in that sandbox. I need a, I need a rich All right. relative. All right. So, uh, 
Thank you very much for listening. Uh, and tonight we're all out of funny money. Till next week. 